knew it, y'all. Why? Adina Kozak is here getting deep. Can Phoenix Larry Lester two teams in one night? Super Robot scores his first goal. And then some. <laughs> That's me. We got an action-packed night tonight as Lowell travels to TMO City to face off against those nasty robots from another solar system. The top two teams in the Cybertros Conference were ready to do battle. All that was stake was their number one spot! And they came out of the gate shooting like Secretariat on Smack. Blackwood was quick to score and check Mikoff! Why's he gotta be black? Cause that's his name! Uh, now, not to be outdone, Conrad Venema came down the ice and shows the robots that human willpower is better than a motherboard any day. Then off the very next face off, Venema does it again! Hot damn, we got ourselves a shootout! Indeed we do! Now, with their robot pride at stake, the Death Strike returns volley and ties the game at two. No diggity! Now, the big booty strikes back as Adriana Burns swoops one by Jake Meekoff. And when he says big booty, he means juicy in a good way. Now, that is five goals in this first period alone. Would these teams have any scoring left in them for the rest of the game? Bet your vast deference they would. Trisha Covington deflects a shot from Nightmare and the ties the game at three. She is third in the league for Rookie of the Year honor. Yes, but after a penalty taken by that same rookie, Lowell scores again. This time after the faceoff, Lucilla comes and snatches the puck from the scrum. That's right, he pounced on that puck like Paula Deen Donut dipped in catnip. Lowell once again has the lead. Looking to pull away, Tanya Shepard adds another goal. This was low by two! That's eight goals and we are only halfway done with this game. We move to the third, but the score is still 5-3 in favor of the Bandits! Not so fast, Dickie. There must have been one hell of a pet talk in the locker room between periods because the robots came out angry. Oh no! Death Strike scores the second of the game! Then comes the game tying goal from the point. No! The ref is calling it off claiming it was a high stick! They go to the review booth to make the correct call. It better be correct or the robot fans of the Thunderdome will feed the refs their own peels. Yeah. We see the replay, there's no question. That is a goal. I hate the TMO. Nonetheless, the ref comes back with the verdict. It's a goal and we have a tied hockey game. Not for long as Mikoff is unable to pull in the rebound and Wardo scores. Yes, the robot you love to hate gives the TMO the lead. Not to worry. Lowell still has some fight left in him and Seth Weinberger scores again. This will take us to overtime. Yes, deep in overtime. With under 30 seconds to go, we have a face-off in the TMO zone. Death Strike wins the face-off and then gets pinned against the boards with Tim Wisniewski. Tim Wisniewski is able to come out of the scrum with a puck and gets it to Travis Espinosa. He shoots and it's blocked, but Emily Gilson recovers the rebound and passes back to Wisniewski. He sees a clear shooting lane and winds up. And he scores, winning the game in TMO City, thus giving the Bandits the best record in the Cybertros Conference. Now we move to Mexico City, who's hosting the Moscow Rap Monkeys, and this game went just as most thought it would. Spare the details of this one-sided battle, we switch to the second period. This is where the Smog are already leading three to nothing. Jeff Martin gets his first goal of the night. Then it is Dalkey hunting season. There's a lot of bad blood between Martin and Dalkey, so the Smog teammates target Dalkey and treat him like a jailhouse snitch. Don't drop the soap! Then Jeff Martin would get another goal. He's looking for his first career hat trick. And guess what? He found it. Yeah, now the smog trounced Moscow eight to nothing, and it looked pretty bad. Look at here as the fans of Mexico City rain the hats down on the ice. And here is a breakdown of the best teams in the UHL. Mexico City trailing only their division rival, the Phoenix Yaks. That is a tough division. Moving from the best teams to the very worst, and Phoenix had the privilege to play two of the worst in Paris and Moscow. Yeah, the Yaks have the best defense and the best goalkeeper in the league, and the players on the bench are talking about which colored duct tape they are going to use on the buns of the artists. I'm going to go with Moff! Now, Phoenix goalie Jeff Kaminsky is having an all-star season, allowing only eight goals in the first 12 games. That is amazing! Yeah, and it got even better for him tonight as the Yaks blanked both the artists and the Rat Monkeys. Double Larry Lester? That might be a first! If I was Buzz Aldrin, I wouldn't want to land on that move. Taped Larry Lester's buns together. 
Let's move on to learn about our prospect of the week. His name is Jason DeBruin. He is tall and knows how to hit. He'll be a great addition to any team. Yeah, now here's what the scouts have to say about him. He owns a very good shot, UHL speed, and a goal scorer's mentality. He can be an asset if used on the power play. He lacks bulk and strength to win corner battles consistently, and sometimes he disappears for extended periods of time, so he must find a level of consistency. And as we can see here in the uh, rookie or uh, prospect challenge, he does have the ability to get the goal when needed. He looks good! He does. He is a tall motherfucker. <laughs> yeah! Now we moved with a disappointed BBC City Reapers who are looking to get back to 500. And Super Robin is looking for his first goal of the season! Well, this was embarrassing. Yeah, for the squirrels! Yeah, Super Robot scores five goals against the squirrels. Five? That's right. Look at it. He's putting that biscuit in the basket like he's the Pillsbury Doughboy's virgin mother. Wow! Yeah, now look at all those hats fly. Wait, wait! So does that mean that the Pillsbury Doughboy is Jesus? Well, I've heard things. I don't know. All this riff-raff. Look at that. He abuses him like a rented donkey on a trip down the Grand Canyon with no snack cakes. I don't know what that means! I don't know what to believe anymore! I can tell you one thing to believe in. Super Robot. He is back and ready with a vengeance. Super Robot, tell us about this offensive explosion you just had. Well, my body, my chassis, is back to 100%. I'm ready to move on and start helping this team win again. I can guarantee you this. The BBC City Reapers will not lose again this season. You can make a book on that, my friend. Tonight, we got a very special guest, Adina Koslick, formerly of the Paris Artists and of the BBC City Reapers. She retired in 2001, but she's been nice enough to join us here tonight. Let's give her a warm welcome. Welcome. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Fine. All right, now you retired in 2001 with 293 goals. I don't know, but 43 fun. goals in 18 games is hot shit to me, right. so go ahead and bring it, babies. <laughs> it is. It is. That is the hot shit. Now, you focus in on your own business. Now, tell me a little bit about this business. Well, um, since I left the league, uh, I stumbled onto the Buddhist path. And that sort of led me in a lot of different directions, and it uh, started to bring some deeper insights and things that I thought I needed to be aware of about our world. And um, all the lessons I learned, you know, playing in the league, I sort of took with me uh, into my now lived experience. And, uh, what is this Buddhist thing? You know, I, I kind of know about it a little bit from storybooks and things of that nature. Isn't it just a fat, bald man that you rub the belly? Um, there are several different depictions of Buddha, yes, and one of them is a fat, bald man. I don't know about rubbing bellies so much, um, but uh, the Buddhist perspective is um, taking an inner, uh, taking some time to go inside of you and find out what you're best at and uh, aligning the heart and mind to project an expression that perpetuates what you want to continue doing in your life. Interesting. But to me, it kind of sounds like a cult. Uh, it's not a cult. It's a springboard to continue expanding your awareness of how our world works and the connections that we all have. Hmm. So there's no David Koresh's all up in this piece? Not so much uh, Koresh, Waco, blowing up things. No, hmm. it's actually the opposite direction of that. Uh, it's a removal from I mean, even something simple like you and I, we're in the kitchen, and I bump into you. If we live in a loving environment, you're not going to want to stab me with a knife. If we live in a non-loving environment, you're going to get pissed off, and you're going to either stab me with a knife, which I hope you wouldn't do. <laughs> I don't know you very well. Uh, or you'll, or you'll uh, you lash out in some other way with anger or screaming at me or pointing. Some sort of removal of your own responsibility, like move your own self into a space where you're not bumping into other people. My level of violence goes up with how many Kodiak ridges I've had <laughs> that day. I'm not sure what a Kodiak ridge is, but it sounds like some sort of um, drug or some sort that 
put you in a position to be able to tolerate your world. It's the best beer ever known to man. Do you hurt people while you're drinking the Ridge? Only people's feelings. Okay, that's their responsibility to be in charge of their own feelings, so there's really nothing wrong. I think you're doing an exemplary job. Thank Nicely you. Done. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do what I can. It's you know, I'm trying to make the planet better. It's I'm feeling it. Thank you. Yeah, Thank no you. problem. You got a site where you kind of explain all of this stuff in more depth that we cannot go into at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, it is called bridgenow.me. Mm -hmm. And in the fall, you're coming out with a YouTube channel and a podcast that will be Bridge YouTube. Yes, promoting all of the ideas that we're talking Correct. about here that I... So people can learn a little bit more or a lot more on what, what goes on when you're not dealing with David Koresh type of people. Do you find yourself dealing with David Koresh people often? Well, I was one of the ones who escaped from Waco. Oh, I had no idea. That's a pretty intense experience. How... There was a lot of ridge there. Oh. That's how I kind of... Does your pastor he, know he, that... He lured me in with the ridge. He did? Yes. It sounds like something David would do. Now, it was a party. It was fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When the ATF busted in, <laughs> I was actually going out to get more Kodiak Ridge. So you were gone? This is like a... I pulled back up, up and the up cops you. were there, so I, I hightailed it out of there. Oh, my gosh. I, was, I didn't want to go to so jail. So how did you find out? Did you see when you came back with the ridge... Two packs. You saw the ATF packs. rolling up on your space. Yes. And I, no, 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 they were already there. There were, there were flames. Because uh -huh. I caught a couple hookers in town, too. So it was, oh, so it took you a lot longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it, wasn't just a, it wasn't just a beer run. Right. It was hookers and beer. Right. So you, that's, what that's how your universe set you up to yes. not be a part of that yes. horrific experience. Right. For... So God was looking out for me. He wanted me to be able to do this show. So God is. God's a fan of the UHL. Okay. I would like to thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It was our pleasure. Time. It was good to catch up and let, good to know what our former players are doing. And it's nice to hear that you are doing something so, how can I say, beautiful with your, with your life. Well, I appreciate it. The, there are some differences between us that um, I feel are starting to really grow together in a, a very unique way. So thanks a lot. I really You're appreciate welcome. the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now we come to a new segment we like to call Heads of the Week. Stumbling, trying to balance all my woes Became a troubled man, walking along a scary road I didn't understand, how did I wind up in this place? I don't know what I did and don't know how I can escape How was this week? Make sure you follow us both on Twitter For Mark Buck, I'm Dick Residue We wish you the best Of the best That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love a mouthful. <laughs>